Is liberalism thriving? I think it's won most of the, its major battles in the last 50 years. I don't think you can think of a democratic society without liberal values, tolerance, limited power, checks and balances, civil rights and civil liberties, all the kind of structure of liberalism keeps democracy from becoming majority tyranny. So, you know, liberalism is, isn't dead. Capital L liberalism, big government liberalism, interventionist liberalism, that's another issue. But if you're talking about liberalism as a vision of limited government and civic freedom, it's more alive than ever. My feeling is that one of the problems we have, to which I have absolutely no solution at all, is that we live in these huge cities. It's not just that the world is a globalised economy. We live in huge cities in which we have an inheritance of taxes, regulations, policies, institutions, and cat's cradles just aren't in it. So my own feeling is that the problem is, is not is liberalism dead, is liberalism due for a revival. I actually think the basic principles of, I'm going to say Gladstonian liberalism, are actually just as alive and just as relevant as they ever were. It's just the world has become a lot less not a lot less forgiving. It has become less forgiving. It's become much, much less malleable. It's unbelievably hard to do anything. I think that's one reason why politicians feel so powerless. It's not the power's gone somewhere else. It's that actually doing anything has become incredibly difficult. Liberalism is not dead. People want to have control of their own lives and the kind of freedoms that we Again, take for granted the in the West but still aren't enjoyed across so the world. So liberalism still matters, but liberalism has to marry with an understanding of belonging, what gives us a sense of identity, what gives us roots, what gives us the, often the meaning in our lives. And it's when it becomes rootless that it lacks the, the kind of the popular appeal that is so important for any really successful political movement. And that's where the conservative connection between free markets and belonging and institutions and national identity. I think that's where conservatism and liberalism have a lot to support each other. Um, liberalism is alive and it's killing us because it can't get beyond the liberal, the individual and the collective and it can't conceptualise decentralised democratic institutions that can constrain capital and the state. Now, the economist has always, always, always um, plugged liberalism into the life support machine. So to claim that it's come back to life is one of the most grotesque statements that they've ever made because as far as they're concerned, it's never been dead and completely dominates their analysis. But the problem with liberalism, once again, is that it undermines liberty because it only can conceptualise of the individual and the collective and has no conception of society and the liberties protected by free, self-governing, democratic institutions. So, you know, liberalism is certainly not in retreat, um, but equally I don't think, you know, as the economist is claiming, I don't think, uh, I think if anything, that the, the kind of the movement is in the other direction. Um, yeah, uh, that there isn't, it's not, there's not a, a new age of liberalism. You know, we have been in the liberal age, and we're sort of adjusting as we experience the the, the, the negative outcomes. We're we're adjusting within a still broadly liberal frame.